The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Spirit of God dwelling within us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of Almighty God, the love of God the Son, and the fellowship of God the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's great to welcome you all uh, to this Leavers Mass. I understand this is your final day um, at a school where many of you have been here for what, seven years? Um, it's a momentous moment, and it's great to gather with you to mark it in celebrating the Mass together. Gentlemen, you are most welcome here. We gather to keep the memory today of St. Philip Neary. Now, I don't know if he's a priest, that will, a saint that will be very familiar to you, but for me, he's very significant. Uh, St. Philip Neary is the patron saint of parish priests. And when I was in Rome studying for the priesthood, the house where he lived and the church in which he celebrated the Mass were just the other side of the main road from where my college was. He's quite a figure, a mischievous sense of humor, a holy man who had a great affinity with young people. And for reasons that I'll explain a little in the homily, he was a man who was a good person to turn to as you set out on a big journey, as you set out in a big moment in your life. So we seek his prayers today. We seek to learn from his example. And we begin this Mass by calling to mind our sins, turning trustingly to God, enjoying his mercy, assured of his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You are the truth that sets us free. Christ, have mercy. And you are seated now at the right hand of the Father to intercede on our behalf. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty, have, Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who never ceased to bestow the glory of holiness on the faithful servants you raise up for yourself, graciously grant that the Holy Spirit may kindle in us that fire with which he wonderfully filled the heart of St. Philip Neri, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Do please be seated, and who's going to read our readings for us? Please. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. I want you to be happy, always happy in the Lord, I repeat. What I want is your happiness. Let your tolerance be evident to everyone. The Lord is very near. There is no need to worry, but if there is anything you need, pray for it. Asking God for it with prayer and thanksgiving, and that peace of God, which is so much greater than we can understand, will guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ, in, in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, fill your minds with everything that is true, everything that is noble, everything that is good and pure, everything that we love and honor, and everything that can be thought virtuous of, of, or worthy of praise. Keep doing all the things that you learned from me and have been taught by me and have heard or seen that I do then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise always on my lips. In the Lord, my soul shall make its boast. The humble shall, the humble shall hear and be glad. Response. I will bless the Lord at all times. Glorify the Lord with me. Together let us praise his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me. From all my terrors he set me free. Response. Look towards him and be radiant. 
let your faces not be abashed. This poor man called. The Lord heard him and rescued him from all his distress. Response. The angel of the Lord is encamped around those who revere him to rescue them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He is happy who seeks refuge in him. Response. Revere the Lord, you his saints. They lack nothing, those who revere him. Strong lions suffer want and go hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no blessing. Response. Please stand to greet the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Remain in my love, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me, with me in him, bears fruit in plenty. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Holy Father, I pray not only for these, but for those also who through their words will believe in me. May they all be one. Father, may they be one in us as you are in me and I am in you so that the world may believe it was you who sent me. I have given them the glory you gave to me, that they may be one as we are one. With me and them and you and me, may they be so completely one that the world will realize that it was you who sent me and that I have loved them as much as you loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am, so that they may always see the glory you have given me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Father, righteous one, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you have sent me. I have made your name known to them, and will continue to make it known, so that the love with which you loved me may be in them, and so that I may be in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do please sit down. I want you to think back, if you can, on this last day of your secondary education to the first day of your secondary education. Do you remember what your first day at secondary school was like? For many people, it's a particularly memorable moment, you know. What would we have called it at the time, or what would our mothers have called it trying to encourage us? G going to big school, something like that. Turning up that first morning, being shuffled into an unfamiliar form room with people you'd not met before. It's quite a moment to go to secondary school. And now, seven years later, Look at what you've all achieved. Look how you've, I mean, at the risk of sounding like a doting aunt, look how you've grown. Look how you've developed. Look at the abilities you have given yourself now, the opportunities that you've taken advantage of, the way that you've extended your reach, your abilities. Be pleased now as you move to your next stage. Take all of that with you. Let it empower you. Let it take you forward. As St. Paul says, writing to the Philippians, there is no need to worry. Be confident in what you've received. Be confident in who you are. And go forward making a difference. As you do so on this feast day, have the story of the English martyrs in mind. Now, you're setting out on a big moment, a next stage, a big journey, if you like. Um, I'm not going to suggest that there is a direct parallel between you and the martyrs of the Elizabethan era, who, having trained to be priests in Rome, 
was setting back secretly undercover to go and minister to faithful Catholics in our country with the fear of death, of being captured by the secret police, of being imprisoned, and of being killed and tortured in the most horrible ways. Before they set out from Rome, they would go to see a local priest who was known to be a holy man, St. Philip Neri. And they would ask him to pray with them and to give him their blessing. As you set out today, may that same blessing, those same prayers, support you. Because what those young men, having studied, were doing, was setting out in fellowship. In fellowship with one another and in fellowship with God. And that gave them a sense of purpose, a sense of mission. It encouraged them. It gave them the sense that they had something to offer. And it was in that spirit that they went to St. Philip asking for God's blessing that they may achieve, that they would achieve all that they could faithfully and with one another. Jesus prays in today's gospel that they may all be one. There is that same sense of fellowship in the church with each other and with God. We are brought together in that way, in a way that gives us, yes, confidence and a sense of purpose. And I want to share with you my experience of the years that you're about to embark upon, because I think they may be one of the most creative moments in your lives. And you'll look back on them with great fondness, sometimes perhaps with a little embarrassment, but recognizing that these were the moments that made you later into the men that you will be. The friends that I have from the time that you're going, going through now remain my closest friends. I've known these guys for too long, really. Um, I won't do the maths, but they are my deepest, closest, most intimate, if you like, friends. These are the guys that even if I've not seen them for six months, a year, when we get back together, it is as though we've not been apart. I've been at their weddings, they've been at my ordination. I've shared the great moments of my life with them. And I want to encourage you to share in that same way with one another over the coming years. Stay in touch, be one together, support one another, enjoy one another's company, enjoy one another's achievements and support one another in the difficult times. Because these old friendships are absolutely invaluable. The oneness that comes from that fellowship with God and with one another is crucial. It will be a support to you in difficult times and a joy for you in good times. One guy that I was very close to at about your age um, was a guy called Joey. Um, and I tell you this as a kind of cautionary tale. Joey and I kind of lost touch. I was working, I went to university and then was working in the city. Joey forged a really impressive career as a policeman with the Metropolitan Police. He specialized in anti-terrorism stuff and served two tours of Afghanistan as a reservist, riding around in the back of a Jeep with the SAS, having learned Urdu so that he could be part of the interplay between the local people and British forces. And then, about four years ago, he went down with a really terrible illness and died very young. And I never got to sit with him and ask him about his experiences in Helmand province or ask him what it was like to be going from the meetings with ministers to the door with the SWAT team before they went in to a suspected terrorist house. I never got to sit with him and do that. Every year, a bunch of us now do a sponsored walk in his memory, raising money for the charities that tried to cheat, uh, treat him from his illness. But I never got to spend that time with him because we just lost touch. And we were good mates, and it's a loss. Take that as a cautionary tale. Be one, stay in fellowship, support one another, and enjoy one another's company over these coming years.
Shall we stand? And somebody's going to lead us in some bidding prayers, I think. Is that right? Super. Thank you. We pray for those who are victims of violence and oppression. May they find safety and justice. May the conflict end swiftly with your help, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church. May she remain steadfast in her mission to spread the good news of the Lord and bring the world into communion with God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who still suffer from the coronavirus pandemic. May those who are sick have a swift recovery and those unable to return to normal life remain safe and well. We pray that they will be able to see their loved ones soon. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our school community, that our students remain diligent in their work and our teachers remain inspired by Christ. May our community continue to shine with your light, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those of us leaving St. Ambrose this year. May we remain on the right path as we seek new successes and continue to act in your image, Lord, wherever our lives may take us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We offer these prayers and all our prayers up to Mary, our mother, as we pray. Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, grace the Lord, Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hear our prayers, Lord, and answer them in your love, through Christ our Lord. Do please be seated as we prepare the altar for the celebration of the Mass. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. So let us stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, we ask that by the example of St. Philip, we may always give ourselves cheerfully for the glory of your name and for the service of our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Philip, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
you like to sit or kneel? You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Philip and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. So let us stand, and at the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, let us dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Bless you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. So we've spoken a little bit about friendship and about fellowship, and the Lord gives us the Mass so that we may always be in the most perfect fellowship with him, in communion. That's what it is to be with God. So as we come to Holy Communion, a communion that is the sacrament of God's love for each of us, binding us to him in mercy, binding us together in charity. Let's respect this moment in a particularly solemn way. Could I invite you please to wait um, until you're directed to come forward for Holy Communion. Keep your masks on, please, until you come to the black line that you'll see on the floor between the two front benches. And at that point, as the person in front of you is receiving Holy Communion, you can unhook your mask, come forward to receive the host into the hand, consume it immediately, and then replace your masks as you go back down the side aisles and back into your benches. That's our one-way system for our procedures here at the moment. If you're not a Catholic, uh, or you've not made your first Holy Communion for whatever reason, but would like on this special occasion to come forward for a blessing, please do so, but please indicate that by crossing your hands to your opposite shoulders like that so that I know to give you a blessing rather than to give you Holy Communion. We receive Holy Communion at the moment because of the pandemic in silence, so let's now make together our collective act of faith in the real presence of the Blessed Sacrament. The body of Christ. Amen. blood of Christ. Amen. As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love.
us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that in, that in imitation of St. Philip, we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. One final thought from me. A great many people in our country, in our society, associate the church with just their childhood, as though they kind of grew out of it. Please don't fall into that. As you develop over these coming years, as you go forward academically and in a trade or in a profession or in all those different ways that you will learn and grow more, let your faith grow with you. Let it continue to be a challenge to you. Let it be a source of joy and of mercy and of times of comfort for you. Let it bring you together with others. That communion, that fellowship with God and with one another is something you find very much in a church, in a parish community. Those of you, a challenge for you, who are going to university next year or in the coming years, in your first week, look up the local Catholic society at your university. The Cathsoc is often a place of great friendships, great fellowship, and teaching, development, formation in your faith that will equip you for your life going forward. Let your faith develop with you as you develop over these years. God bless you all. I'd like to invite Mr. Rainey to come forward. Would you all be seated, please? Morning, everyone. I would like to begin by saying a thank you to the parish of Holy Angels and also to Father Tom for celebrating Mass with us this morning and for allowing us to use Holy Angels, which has been lovely after 12, 14 months of being unable to, so that, that's been a real bonus for us this morning. Thank you to all those who helped to organize this morning service as well. Ordinarily, we would have had students leading the music uh, and even some collective hymn singing, but due to the restrictions, we've kept things relatively simple this morning. Given how vociferous you are when it comes to the chorus of O Come All Ye Faithful during the choral service, I am gutted that we haven't been able to hear your vociferous tones this morning. Although you aren't necessarily a year group that I can claim to know particularly well, having never taught a class in your year group, I have had enough dealing with you to recognize the potential you have to make a difference to the world and how rounded you have become. I'd just like to thank Niall and Daniel and Owen, because they're probably the only three that I have taught in some philosophy revision sessions this year, and that's been very grounding for me to continue teaching. So thank you to the three RS students this year for that. Prior to lockdown in March last year, one of the last things that we did was to appoint the head boy and deputy head boy team. I can honestly say it was a highlight of my year last year. And from memory, I think the last person that I've actually shaken hands with in the last 14 months was Joe Noble before realizing halfway through the process that we shouldn't actually be shaking hands at all. So Joe, you're the last person that's shaken my hand. Undoubtedly, you as a year group have expressed what it means to be an Ambrosian. We, as a staff collective, have felt for some time now that your year group has been the one with the potential to reshape the culture, particularly in the sixth form. As things stand this morning, we have been proven correct by how you've conducted yourself in really trying circumstances and indeed, your respect for the school, the staff, and your peers throughout the year and so far today. And we sincerely thank you for that. You have now set the standard and the new culture for future year groups to follow. However, I really do feel for you in that the COVID pandemic has impacted on your sixth form experience. Missing the best part of three months last year, and then the health and safety protocols this year have resulted in the experiences that we used to take for granted being taken away. I think particularly of the enrichment opportunities beyond the classroom, whether they be on the rugby field, in the drama studio, in the music rooms, or through the other clubs and societies. These are a huge part of our offer that you have unfortunately been limited to. That said, perhaps you have had some memories and moments the previous year groups won't have had. 
So in years to come, you'll reflect on what it was like to be a sick former during a pandemic. I know it has been additionally trying for you, given the announcement in January, that it would once again be teachers awarding grades. In truth, it wasn't something that we were fully surprised at, but your focus, your attitude and your commitment since returning in September also demonstrated an awareness that this year once again was going to be a little different. Despite the limitations and indeed the challenges and the difficulties, as well as the increased internal assessments, I hope you'll be able to look back positively, not only on your sixth form experience, but on your time at St Ambrose as a whole. If it makes you feel any better, you could have paid £9,000 and had a whole year of online lectures. So for those going off to university in September, we're hopeful that your experience will be different, more positive, and certainly more financially worthwhile than your peers who departed this time last year. To Tom, Max, Niall, Daniel and Jack, thank you for your additional commitment and for leading your team so well, despite the limited opportunities. When we reviewed our mission statement a couple of years ago, we reflected on what it meant to be an Ambrosia and what we as a school wanted for you. So as we read through the mission statement, I want you to listen to it, listen to all the words carefully and reflect on whether you think it is an accurate mission. And from your perspective, whether we as a college have been successful with it. It states, St. Ambrose College will follow the example of Blessed Evan Rice and provide a fully rounded Catholic education in the charism of Blessed Evan, enabling the boys to reach their full potential and fulfilling the eight essentials of an Evan Rice education. The college will develop Ambrosians to be very well educated, empowered and compassionate young men who strive for excellence and justice in all that they do. By working hard together with the gospel at the heart of what we do, the staff and the pupils and families will combine to produce resourceful, resilient Ambrosians equipped to make a positive impact in the modern world. Gentlemen, thank you for all you've contributed to the college, whether it be academically, through the sport, through the arts, through chaplaincy, mentoring, debating, the list goes on. The list of your achievements cannot be understated, and I would encourage you to continue with all your pursuits and using your talents wherever your next steps lead to. If that is at university, sign up to as many societies as you can. Remember what it means to be an Ambrosian. Carry those values with you in your everyday lives. Don't turn a blind eye to injustice and wrongdoings. As Seamus Heaney states, there is no such thing as innocent bystanding. Be a force for good. Strive for excellence. Grow in faith. Show compassion to others. Go and make a positive impact in the modern world. Thank you. Let us stand for the blessing. And we spoke in the homily about St. Philip Neri blessing those about to set out on a great moment in their lives, a great journey. And so in a similar way, we call down the blessing of the Lord upon you. The Lord be with you. And may almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. God bless you all.